dedicate it to each and every one of you who appreciate a great glass of wine. You know what I mean? It's Monday. Let's raise a glass to the beginning of another week. It's time to unscrew, uncork, or saber a bottle. And let's begin exploring the wine glass. Today, I'm sitting down with four of my wine writing friends to discuss Thanksgiving traditions and wine pairing suggestions. Do you have any Thanksgiving traditions? Do you watch the parade? Watch the football games? What about specific dishes that must be on your holiday table? And what about those wine pairings? Is it easy or difficult? With Thanksgiving having so many different plates, it may be a challenge to choose a single wine to please all, but we have some pairing tips for you. While listening, please take a moment to subscribe, rate, and review Exploring the Wine Glass wherever you are listening. It is the best way to allow other wine lovers to find and enjoy the podcast. Slancha. Hey everybody, I'm Lori Budd, a UC Davis winemaking program, someday service, champagne specialist, and WSET level 2 graduate. You can find Exploring the Wine Glass on all the socials as well as your favorite podcast catchers. If you haven't subscribed yet, now's the perfect time to swipe, subscribe, rate, and review. I promise I'll never tell you what to drink, but I'll always share what's in my glass. Give me the wine, wine, wine. Everybody, welcome to another episode of Wine Writers Wrap Up. I am so happy to be here with my wine writing friends. And today, it is October, but I thought that we would get into a little prep, which is really, really rare for me to be prepared for anything. Um, but since Thanksgiving is coming up, and I guess a little late for Canadian Thanksgiving since that was yesterday. Um, but anyway, Thanksgiving is such um, an interesting wine holiday because the tables have so much going on on you know during that dinner and it's like food fest from the kickoff of the first game to way past the ending of the second game of the day and there's just so much opportunity for wine so i reached out and asked my wine friends for some of their thanksgiving traditions and some of their favorite pairings so before we get into that, let I'm going to give them each a little bit of time to introduce themselves. So Maria, how about you first? Hi everybody, I'm Maria Ferraro Beardsley from Wine and Cheese Friday. Um, many of you that have seen me on here know that I travel all the time. So where am I? I'm in Montana today. Um, and uh, you'll find me on uh, all the social media stuff talking about wine and cheese pairings. Um, that's our main deal. <laughs> it can't get better than wine and cheese, seriously. <laughs> and Michael. Uh, hi, I'm Michael Kelly, and I write for California Wines and Wineries. Uh, also hold the uh, annual Cabernet Franc celebration out in California. And this year we're going, uh, besides just doing it domestically, uh, we're also going international for Cap Bronx. Woohoo! Debbie? I'm Debbie Giacquindo. I'm known as the Hudson Valley Wine Goddess. I'm a wine blogger, wine writer, certified uh, specialist in wine, and a wine location specialist in Port and Champagne, and um, an author of Tapping the Hudson Valley, Day Trips, and weekend itineraries, visiting the Hudson Valley wine region, and I'm co-host with Lori for Wine for Bet Street, and I think that's it. You forgot the restaurant. Oh, I'm co-owner of uh, Trio North Wildwood. It's a restaurant in North Wildwood, New Jersey, and we will be open till uh, the end of the year, Jan or December 31st, and then we'll reopen again in April. Awesome. And we have a newcomer. I'm so excited to the Wine Writers Wrap Up, Carlos. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. I'm Carlos Sarmiento from Miami, Florida, uh, with Carlos Food and Wine. Uh, my background is really uh, public relations, but food and wine has been in my blood since I was in high school. I was opting to be a chef, but that changed. So I came back during the pandemic and started cooking again and documenting it, and carlos-food-wine.com started from that. And really my, my goal is to get everybody back into the kitchen and try new things, both with food and with the proper wine pairing. So I am here to learn, I'm here to share, 
and I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, Lori. Well, I'm so happy to have you. We have been uh, social media buddies for quite some yes. time, so it is. Ha I'm so happy to finally have you here and to see you face to face. Um, and I am your host, Lori. My husband, Michael, and I own Dracena Wines in Paso Robles. Uh, we are specialists in Cabernet Franc. And I, on the other side of it, hold my WSET Level 2, UC Davis winemaking graduate, uh, champagne specialist, and most recently, Rioja specialist. <laughs> that, ended, that was uh, two weeks ago I did that. Um, and I am so happy to have everybody here and talking about Thanksgiving and what you drink and what you eat and what you do on that wonderful holiday, which just happens to be the holiday that I was born on. So it's a little special holiday. Um, and are people drinking? Michael, you've got your water. <laughs> All right, so Michael's got his water with, it looks like he's got a little added powder in there. Carlos, yeah. what are you drinking? Tonight I'm having a Francis Coppola Claret. Oh, okay, very nice, and a Coppola glass even, yes. very you know, nice. You can, tell. you can tell, all right, there you go. <laughs> I, I, can, I got eyes like a hawk, man. Maria, <laughs> what about you, are you drinking? Yeah, I've got um, a GSM from South Africa. It's called Lubanzi. Um, mm. Never heard of it before. I was at the grocery store. They had cans of it, and I was like, hmm, that sounds good, but let me see what they have in bottles. And then I was like, oh, they have a bottle of it, too. All right. So I just just opened it, and uh, I get a lot of berry. Um, my husband said he got a lot of tannins, so we we're all different. Different palettes, absolutely. A little bit easier to get wine uh, in Montana than Costa Rica, huh? Oh, boy. Yeah, I mean, they have it in the grocery store here, so uh, <laughs> I can find it. <laughs> Deb, what are you drinking? Well, I already had uh, two bottles of Chardonnay, so nice. So I've got water. Nice. Oh, okay. All right. All right. We had uh, fish for dinner, so we had some some Chardonnay, and I left the corks out, so I was going to bring the corks to the event here, but they're downstairs. Yeah. Well, they ended up in the trash because Paul cleaned it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, well, I was doing wine all day from noon to 4.30 today, so yeah. as we do, we go to an IPA at night. <laughs> After wine all day, it's IPA at night. So this is Voodoo Ranger, and it is one of my favorite IPAs to, to have in the house. So everybody, slancha, and thank you for joining. Even your water, Michael. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's get into our conversation about Thanksgiving. So who wants to start off with a Thanksgiving tradition that they do, something that you do. Is there anything that you do every Thanksgiving? Anybody can jump in. I'll go, I'll go. Ahead, I'll go. I'll break the ice. Um, All right. Well, um, interestingly enough, I'm glad you brought Thanksgiving to, to the discussion. Um, last year, during the pandemic, it was really, I was kind of starting this uh, carlosfood-wine.com website, and in Miami, it's pretty traditional, especially within the Latin community, to not only do turkey during Thanksgiving, but the majority, especially if you're Cuban-American like I am, uh, pork is usually involved in it. So uh, we did two things. We did the traditional turkey breast, not a complete turkey. I did a turkey breast in the uh, air fryer, which turned out ex extremely well. And we always do a pork loin. And we do it, the pork loin, we do it Cuban style with, you know, um, sour oranges and garlic and spices and and normally I like to do I, I think of Thanksgiving with your typical calves uh, maybe a Merlot occasionally a Pinot but for this Thanksgiving that I did last year I actually paired it with Malbec and and I found it an extremely versatile wine that went both with the turkey and with the pork oh. loin but I, 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 I yeah. I was thinking more of the pork side than the turkey, so that's awesome that it went with the turkey also. Yeah, yeah, it went really well. I mean, we did some really good um, side items like um, uh, 
you know, your typical mashed potatoes. We did sweet potato mash. We also did, um, my favorite was a, a green beans with almonds, uh, green beans almondine, French style. And, and I did asparagus with lemon zest, which really brought, you know, because it's still hot over here in Miami during Thanksgiving, even in Christmas. So you want something fresh with a lot of bite. Um, so I found that the asparagus with lemon zest really brought out the taste uh, for the rest of the meal. Wow. That's awesome. And I have all of these all of these recipes are available on my website, which I can share with you later. Um, and I plan actually to repeat them. I love them so much. But this time I, I like to try a different wine. Uh, hint, hint, maybe a Cabernet Franc this time. <laughs> I like hearing that. <laughs> Deb, what were you going to say? Yeah, I said I want to try a pork wine. Yeah. Very awesome. good. Easy to so do, good. quickly, and too. and I guarantee you, you're going to love the taste. It's, it's very, um, it, it just goes really well. And, and it's not even a, a Thanksgiving. I mean, this is, some, this is a dish you can do pretty much year-round. Awesome. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. Now, in terms of in terms of what you do on Thanksgiving, uh, does does any has anybody been to the parade? Yeah, I was gonna say, Deb, right? You've been, okay? I've been. How many two. times have you been to the parade, Deb? Just once. Do you ever want to go again? Never. Never. <laughs> Some things are better watched from your living room. But yeah. yeah. I'm gonna tell you so. So my my grandmother, my mom grew up in New York City. My grandmother lived there. She died in 2006. So we had our apartment, which was on West 86th Street and Broadway. And I'm like, I'm going to the parade. So packed up the kids, the husband, we went to the parade. And it, it was great. It was a once-in-a-lifetime bucket list, let's check off. But you know what? It's much better watched from your, your living room while you're cooking dinner. I, yes. I absolutely concur. I think it's something that everybody should do. You know, if you're in the area, it's definitely everybody should do it because it really is the parade is I think it's incredible on TV, but it's it is mesmerizing in real life. And but I don't need to do it again. Like, <laughs> but I mean, it's like, like the night before the, the night before uh, Thanksgiving, when they blew up the balloons on Central Park. West. That's cool. That's really a sight. That's really a sight to see, and um, y you have to go one way, and it's it, but it, it it's really a sight to well, see. I, I, I didn't know that. That's that's great. Yeah, go to that's that. Actually, probably better than the parade. Right. <laughs> but when you go to the parade, you you know once you go in, that's it. You know, like we're here to pen. Yeah, you're not going out, and <laughs> and that was that was before anything. And, uh, situations happen here um yeah but yeah but yeah the night before they start blowing them up around four o'clock i think and that's really a sight to see them blowing up the balloons yeah it's um not non-thanksgiving but we were in new orleans for mar prior to mardi gras and wow. we our hotel actually had a view of um where they store all of the um floats. The yeah. And that was that was really cool to see too. So that's you know, that's another thing. But that's not Thanksgiving. But yes. I think everybody should do a Thanksgiving parade at least once in their life and then be done with it and be able to say that was cool. But um so any other any traditions would you do? Go ahead, Deb, I'm sorry. No, I said I just can't believe it took me as an adult to go down there. Yeah. <laughs> No, I was just going to say, for me, um, because I travel so much, my Thanksgiving isn't always with family, but the parade is one of the things that I always try to watch. And then when Santa Claus comes down at the end, mm -hmm. I always call my mom. That's like, that's one of uh, our uh, Thanksgiving traditions, because I'm not usually with her, but it does tie into the parade. And I've never gone to see it live, but I do watch it. And even if I can't, find it like for the whole way through I try to find it like right at the end so that I can like you know say Merry Christmas and Happy Thanksgiving and whatever and call my mom on the right time so 
Uh, that's so nice. That's so nice. Yeah. We um, they, Michael, do you watch the parade? Yeah, we watch it. <clears throat> yeah, in between football games and everything else, but we do watch it. And then uh, both my kids marched in it uh, for the high school band. Oh, hmm. oh my goodness. Yeah, but we didn't go back for it. We let the kids go. <laughs> I, think the, I think the band was 200 kids, 200 high school kids. We let them all go, and we said, you have a good time. Oh, but, uh, they, but they had a good time. Uh, they enjoyed it. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, it is a lot of walking. <laughs> yeah. But the only so, tradition, I'm just going to say, the only tradition we have is that we have um, – we usually let the kids and their families go off to their respective in-laws, and we bring in, we've always had, um, like, adopted kids, you know, and these are friends that are younger than us, but they're not really as young as our kids, but they're just, we call them our adopted kids, and they're from Ireland, from the Philippines, they're from all around, and they always come, or they're really old, they're in their 90s, and their kids aren't around, so we bring them in. So it's kind of a mass huddling, and everybody just gives thanks for being together for that day. Wow. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. That's in my house, like Thanksgiving is my holiday. When I grew up, my mom always had Thanksgiving, you know, and as we aged up, Thanksgiving was our holiday because I'm Jewish and we all married Catholics, so we all went to our spouses, families for Christmas, so Thanksgiving was our, our holiday. And to this day, hopefully it was, still will be. Hopefully my, my daughter, who just moved to Boston, will come down for Thanksgiving with her fiancé, and my son, who just got married a couple weeks ago, will come down. And uh, us comes down, and we have um, my friend Jen and her mom, and it's, you know, our own little now families, and we're all we have. That's what, extended families, they're awesome. They it's are. Extended yeah. family because it's not yeah. all, you know. Yeah. Oh, Maria, similar to you calling your mom when Santa comes, um, March of the Wooden Soldiers is usually on on Thanksgiving Day. Has anybody seen that movie? Like old, old Laurel and Hardy movie? It's a yeah. black and white movie. It's um, It's... Laurel and Hardy, and it's kind of like all fairy tale people are in it. And we always watched it as kids with my dad and my mom, you know, or well, more with my dad. My mom would be in and out doing whatever she was doing, but we would sit down. And now that we're not living at home anymore, you know, it would be the same thing. I, I would call and like, oh, March of the Wooden Soldiers are on. And then there'd be certain, there's certain scenes that, you know, are more funny to us or whatever and you'd call up it's that's it you know so it it is it's really nice to be able to have something that is tradition that that brings you back to your family even if you're not there so yeah yeah, yeah. Um, all right yeah. so food wise carlos explained what he does for food any special special meals maria you're, you're going yeah so wherever yeah, you yeah. are what are you cooking um well, you know, Thanksgiving is actually really tricky for Neil and I because Neil actually has, like, a million food allergies. So mm. he's actually allergic to turkey. So we can't oh. have turkey. And I've never – Neil, what are we going to do with you? <laughs> and he's gluten sensitive, so we can't have stuffing or pie or any of that. So oh. when – um. When we first found out about all of that, we said, you know what, we're just going to skip Thanksgiving and we're going to go camping. So we would go camping most years on Thanksgiving and we would eat salmon and drink Pinot Noir and cook it all on the fire. And that was our Thanksgiving a while ago. But um, at one point we found out about a stuffed pumpkin and it's a pumpkin that you put spinach, walnuts, like pomegranate seeds, just all these different things, like pumpkin seeds, I think, like all different things like that. You put them all in a pumpkin, and you bake the pumpkin. And so we did that a few holidays because we wanted to feel festive and have something holiday-like and not have to worry about all of Neil's allergies. So the uh, stuffed pumpkin was really cool, and 
Um, we like to pair wines that had spice in them um, with that because that flavor usually went really well with the pumpkin. Um, so we had um, Morvedra one year. We had, uh, I would say, probably a GSM another year. So we were all in that same area. But, but we liked, um, if we could find a wine that might have had like a cinnamon note to it, we thought that would go really well with the pumpkin. So, um, so that was cool. But for us, it would be like we would eat the pumpkin together and maybe there'd be a couple family members, but my family is all over the U.S., so having a big Thanksgiving meal has probably only happened since graduating college, maybe three times, four times. That's probably it. So, um, so we usually have uh, our own Thanksgiving meal, but the Thanksgiving pumpkin was really cool. I would definitely recommend that for someone else who might not eat Thanksgiving foods. <laughs> well, I'm going to need to get that recipe. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I still have it. It's been a while since we made it, but I'm pretty sure I still have it. I have a whole folder of rece uh, recipes. Maria, have you considered uh, the Mediterranean diet? Um, they, yeah, we actually, um, and, and it's funny because we actually eat a lot of Latin-inspired um, foods because okay. a lot of the... Latin, Greek, um, Mediterranean, all of those things, you can get away from um, gluten and uh, yeah. any bird meat usually. <laughs> so okay. um, those are our main uh, things that we avoid. But, yeah, it's so funny because when we get into a situation where it's like pizza and hamburgers, that's when it gets hard for us because that's all like, you know, regular American food. But um, – I, I was challenged not too long ago by a colleague of mine that had, uh, you know, it's gluten-free, mm -hmm. and she actually asked me to come up with a menu for her. So I came up uh, doing some research with Mediterranean diet, um, big on sweet potato and that kind of thing, which really goes with the season. Right. Um, and I think I did a chicken recipe, but, well, you're saying you can't do, you know, birds, but maybe a pork loin or maybe some sort of seafood might go well with that too. Right. And I, I can I can tell you like white wines, right? You enjoy yeah, yeah, white I wine, like so wines, I like I like all wines, but uh, <laughs> I, you know, I'm all about wines whenever whatever your your taste is, whatever your feel is, doesn't matter what time of the year. I mean in Miami it's perpetual summer, so it doesn't right. matter. Right. But um, I found with the Mediterranean diet like a good Albarino from Spain is is fantastic uh, and it's very versatile. So, right. um, but um, I'd be happy to share, you know, my website, I have a few recipes that might go with what you need as well. Sure. Sorry, yeah, shameless yeah, plug here. That. Sure. That's okay. That's okay. Hey, well, that's yeah. yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Debbie, Debbie knows, uh, and, well, Michael knows too, I don't eat meat. <laughs> oh, okay. It has to be very hidden. It has to be very hidden for me to eat, to eat it. So... You know, when Debbie and I do wine pairing, like we alternate for wife of Bed Street who does the wine pairing. I'm like, every time I have to do it, I'm like, ah, <laughs> you know. But uh, so my Thanksgiving um, is very simple. I do spinach. I do green beans, so that almond green bean thing sounds delicious. And there's biscuits. That's that's my meal. Oh. That has been my meal since a little kid. Family makes the turkey, family makes cranberry, family makes all of that stuff, and I eat the biscuits, cream spinach, and green beans. That, that's the meal. Um, but what, about lint what about lentils? Do you like lentils? Uh, yeah, sort of, kind of, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I love hummus when you all grind it up, but to bite into, bite into a bean, not okay. so much. It's, it's all as my husband as my husband says it's all texture it's all it's all about the mouthfeel mm -hmm. so but let's get into wine and thanksgiving so as i said at the beginning right thanksgiving is easy to wine pair but difficult to wine pair at the same time because it's so so many you know like i don't i don't think there's any other holiday really that you plop down like 20 different things on a table at the same time. So what are, what, what are your favorite? I have in my head, I, 
the types of wines that I always have on the table for Thanksgiving. And they pretty much include the lighter bodied wines, like a Pinot Noir. One of my favorites is Gamay for, for Thanksgiving. And then if I'm going into the white realm, you know, there's always sparkling on any holiday table for me. There's always a sparkling. But I like Cava or Prosecco when it comes to Thanksgiving. So just what are some of your favorite wines for Thanksgiving, and what are you pairing it with? Like the, the asparagus is one of the most difficult things to pair food with. And I, I don't know that jelly, ooh, cranberry thing, um, I don't know what you pair with that, and I don't know why anybody has that on the table. But what are your favorite pair? <laughs> Michael, sure, you I eat that cranberry. jelly cranberry? So, you got to have cranberry. Well, yeah, so but my, like, I would think oh, have lots of different kinds of cranberries. Because I make, right. uh, you know, cranberry sauce from cranberries. And it usually has alcohol in it, like, I don't know, vanilla, uh, bourbon. That's why Deb and I get along so well. <laughs> I mean, I have to, like, half of it I take out because um, somebody that attends our, our Thanksgiving is AA, so i got to have something for her to eat. And then my nephews and my kids like the Ocean Spray Gel Cranberry, so there's, like, three things of those. Mm. There's all different kinds of cranberry sauce at my house. But I, I will say, like, we like to start with um, sparkling wine, and it's usually a cava or a um, or, or champagne, a grower champagne. And we last year we ended up with we had a um, turkey and a ham. So we had you know white wines, Albarino. We had Pinot Noir. We had some Chardonnays. Um, we had Gamay. But we didn't go anywhere stronger than, like, a Pinot Noir, um, as far as reds go. And, um, you know, white was pretty much Chardonnay, Albarino. The lighter, lighter wines. You're agreeing yeah. with lighter aspect. And this year I think I'm going to try some Pet Nats instead of um, Oh. I got some Hudson Valley Pet Nats that... Um, I think it'll be a really nice, you know, to start off with. It's a pet nat of Cap Franc. Mm. <gasps> oh, ooh, 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 we got to hear about that. It's really good. I did my Michael. seminar. Nice, 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 nice. And now, a word from our sponsor. Exploring the Wine Glass is brought to you by Dracina Wines. Dracina Wines is an artisan winery located in Paso Robles, California. They have been producing wine since 2013. Their first vintage began with one wine, their classic Cabernet Franc, which received a 91 in Wine Enthusiast. Since then, they have increased production as well as expanded their portfolio, have received many accolades, including multiple double gold medals and consistent 90-plus ratings. Visit their website, www.dracinawines.com, or use the link in the show notes to schedule a private tasting and to see their entire portfolio. Purchase your award-winning wine and let Dracina Wines help turn your moments into great memories. Michael, I'm still I'm still flabbergasted that you served the the canned <laughs> cranberry. Oh, no. I'm flabbergasted. So it's both. It's both canned and the. Ah, it doesn't matter. I am flabbergasted that that is even in your house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It is. It's in the cabinet. It's in the pantry. <laughs> and it will be there. Doomsday will come, and that cranberry will still be in there. <laughs> No, it's served on Thanksgiving. Right. Canned cranberry sauce gel is like a staple for Thanksgiving. Yep. Yeah. Well, it's like year. it's like the Twinkie of Thanksgiving. It just yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> one year before we started the uh, Thanksgiving meal, I did a, a wine and cheese pairing with the family, and um, we had a prosecco and a goat cheese that was rolled in cranberries. Um, oh, and then we that's still good. had some of the uh, cheese left, and that year we had a ham and a turkey. And so I spread some of the cheese on the turkey, 
And I was like, oh, man, this is good. So it was cheese, turkey, and cranberry. So it wasn't any of the fake cranberry. I guess it was probably, I, I would say it was more like a craisin that was on the outside of the cheese. It wasn't, like, fresh or gel or whatever. It was dried cranberry probably. But um, that was our cranberry that we had one year with our uh, Thanksgiving meal. <laughs> All right, that that cranberry, that goat cheese with the cranberry, they also have that. You did it with, um, yeah. when you did it with the blueberry, that is yep. so good. I could yeah, eat that, that all day great. long. Yeah. I could yeah. eat that all day long. But uh, All right, Michael, bring it on. Well, What's on your table? So I made the cardinal sin today trying to figure out what we serve for Thanksgiving because I'm not involved in typically in the food preparation. I do all the other things, but I don't get involved with Thanksgiving. That's my wife and the kids, typically. If they're here, if they're not here, it's just my wife doing it, and it's for all of our friends that show up. In these. So, uh, and then last year it was the COVID, and the year before, we actually went to go two hours to meet with 18 people at a Chinese restaurant. So that's why I didn't have the memory of why what we were doing for Thanksgiving. So I called, my wife is out of town. I text her. I said, what do we serve for Thanksgiving? She goes, don't you know I'm always cooking? I go, no, I don't. <laughs> you know, so, so I'm in the doghouse. Uh, but anyway, we always, she informed me today, and I wrote it down. We always have turkey for Thanksgiving, and we always have prime rib for Christmas. So I said, great, got that. So then I went back and went back to 2016 and started looking at my photos of what we served. Now, two years were absentee being last year and the Chinese because we had to drive two hours. We weren't drinking. So, but I went back and what we had been serving, we always start out with champagne, a uh, uh, French champagne, um, just just because we're having friends over that we have we don't see all the time and we appreciate them. And then we do a nice Chardonnay, either a Kistler, or a Maritana, or a Mike, uh, Peter David, or Peter Michael, I mean. Um, and then we typically go into, uh, then for the actual meal, we serve Pinot Noir, or we serve Pickpool, or Roussan, or Roussan. Oh, Pickpool. Yeah, and we do a, a, and I really like the this uh, Marsan Roussan 50-50 blend. And that's kind of been our, for the last, the, not the last two years, but the previous three or four years, that's what we had been serving for the wines. I like pick pool on the Thanksgiving table. What do, what do you guys think? Do you agree with that? I agree. Yeah, that'd be I've yet to try that. But, so. yeah. you, haven't had a, you haven't had pick pool or just pick pool with Thanksgiving? No, no, at all. I've never tried that one at all. Okay. Are you? Have you? So, Pickpool is the name comes from Lipstinger, right? So it it's a it's a very acidic wine, um, but it and is. And that's why you need the cranberries on the turkey with <laughs> <Okay>. the wine. <laughs> right. Lip smacking wine, huh? It is. Oh, I love Pickpool. I love. Oh, I I I gotta go. That's good. Palace Creek in in. California does a pick pool. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. I, we, and we've been using Acquiesce, uh, which is right yeah. down 45 minutes from here. We we yeah. spent a lot of time with Susan uh, Tipton at Acquiesce, and so right. I like yeah. all of her white wines. They're, she's just kind of got the whole market of white wines. She does. Hmm. Yeah. So, if, if Carlos, if you are not familiar with Acquiesce, you, you need to be. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. uh, she she is magical, and it's all white, which is rare, um, you know. But uh, I have yet to have a wine of hers that is not stunning. It, okay. It's yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not even just drinkable. It each wine is stunning. She is. I don't she know is, which one you purchase to bring home because. Well, I saw that last time this summer. This summer you bought them all? Well, this summer, my wife and I went down, and we did a, a tasting, and 
I went through it and I said, uh, and I went down. I was going to get a couple of bottles of this, a couple of bottles of that. I came home with I think eight hundred dollars worth of wine with my discount. Wow. So I ended up buying six of I think four or five of her wines. Yeah, she Carla, she's a, she is incredible. Her wines are outrageous. Outrageous. Wow. Okay, I'll check it out for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Carlos, I can also tell you that Lori and Debbie did an episode of Wine for Bet Street about Pickpool, and when I tasted it, I listened to their to their broadcast so I could learn more about it when I was tasting it. So if you want to oh, okay. learn more about it, you can find Thanks, it Maria. with them talking all about it. Aw, thanks, Maria. <laughs> nice. All right. We did. We did. All right. So, wineforbetstreet.com. Yep. All right. So we have... We have turkey. We have that dreaded cranberry in a can. Um, <laughs> is there anything else that you guys have? The uh, Carlos, you talked about the the, the uh, green beans with almonds. Is there anything else that you feel needs to be on a table of Thanksgiving? And then, is there the perfect wine? Like, do you guys just with your wine? Do you just open it and have a field day that you know like everything gets opened at the same time or are you all right here's the here's the introduction you know here's the appetizer here's the main course we're going to have a couple of here here's a dessert how do you guys deal with the wine when it comes to thanksgiving i, I try to find the wine that is kind of universal that i can I'm, i mean I'll, I'll buy like a few bottles of the same wine that i know may long last i try not to mix too many wines at least I do. Um, you know, it, it's a good idea. I, I like what I hear about the champagne or the Prosecco, a sparkling, something sparkling in the beginning. I think that's fun. Um, I, I'm going to try that. I haven't done that. But normally I just stick with one wine. I'll try to do a white and a red for those that like okay. white and red. And I try to be as close as I can as far as food pairing with both wines. But I, I try to just stick with two. So I don't go crazy. Um, yeah, and with whites, I guess I tend I tend to go with the, like the oaky stuff, you know, shards and you know that kind of thing. But with with reds, I try to blend it. I you know lately I've been getting into the blends much more than than single you know source grapes. Although I did find that lately the the cabs from Paso are fantastic. Um, I find them so mellow, and I find I find them so sweet, and and I think they go really well. And for me, uh, it's all about the the alcohol per volume. I tend I for me the sweet spot is a 13.5 percent. Um, anything higher than that requires like a good steak or, or something very austere and robust. Okay. So um, I try to go, if I'm going to go with a cab, I try to go with a 13.5%. Otherwise, I will hit, like you said, you know, the burgundies or the, um, or maybe the pinots. But, um, but I'm interested in knowing, you know, these cab francs, um, what, what, they, what they offer. Because I think, uh, to me, cab francs lately have been uh, a wondrous grape, a wondrous wine. That that is amazing and 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 versatile. So I personally, I would like to try it for this year. I would like to see what I can do with Cap Franks. Well, I, so. they are very versatile. That is that when somebody asks me, well, what is a Cap Franc? You know, I, I I tell them, you know, it's it's the parent of Cabernet Sauvignon. It's the parent mm -hmm. of Merlot. It's the parent of Malbec, and it kind of takes the best of all of all of those. And you know, it's got the body of a Cabernet Sauvignon. It's got the, it's got that little spice of that Carmenere Malbec, you know, world. And then it's got that silky finish of a Merlot. So it's, right. you know, Cap Franc has has taken its best qualities and has dished it out to its offspring little by little. Um, so it, I do think it's a, it's a good pairing for on the Thanksgiving table uh, because it is usually a lighter it is a lighter meal, although Cap Franc can stand up to that, that you know, that slab of steak. Right. But it can do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll tell you what. You know. Sorry, I love it. I love it. Okay. In our house, yeah. in 
our Thanksgiving, um, you know, it starts around 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and we'll start with the sparkling and with the white wines. And then we transition, and you know, every everybody's Thanksgiving is different, and everybody has their own uh, special uh, dishes that they serve. One of ours is a noodle pudding. It's noodles with uh, cottage cheese, sour cream, and on the top it's cornflake crumbs and butter, and uh, you know, mashed potatoes and. Stuffing, and we do have vegetables and stuff too. But we kind of transition from the appetizers. We do a bunch of appetizers while we watch football, and we're usually drinking sparkling wines and white wines. And then we transition over to dinner, where we drink more white wines, and then we we go into the bread. That that's pretty similar to us. That's pretty similar to us. We'll start with the sparkling, and as I said, you're, we're, we typically are doing Prosecco or Cava. Um, Debbie, I want to get more into the grower champagne, why you like grower champagne. We'll do that in a minute. And then we kind of migrate into um, an Albarino uh, for the white. Usually have a Chardonnay because people are familiar with Chardonnay, and Albarino scares people off sometimes because, just because of the name. But then when we get to that heart of the meal, like I said, I, we do Pinot or Gamay, and then we usually end up with with a sparkling or the rare moment that we open up a port for for the dessert, you know, um, you know. But that's that's kind of like our realm. We we kind of go like the peak and then back down. But um, yeah. so Deb, I want to go back to that that grower. Why? You very specifically said grower champagne, and so why why do you choose grower champagne? Well, because I belong to a champagne club. Oh, and it's all grower champagne. But it what what people don't realize, and and this is probably a topic of of another conversation, is you don't have to have like these champagne houses like the Vu and and everything. Um, they buy great from other from all these other growers. So these growers have now also produced their own uh, sparkling wines. And there's some wonderful I and I can't tell you off the top what the name is because it's in my wine cellar and I'm really bad with memorizing them. But there's one in particular that I, I it's fantastic. And they make really good wines. They produce them in small lots, small quantities, because a lot of their grapes are sold off to the champagne houses. But you really can't turn an eye to them because they're wonderful. And a lot of times they're sold for half the price on the market. Yep. So, and that, and, and that's, these are, that's the key. And these are U.S. US uh, sparkling wines? No, 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 French. Oh, French, okay. They are champagne. They are champagne. Okay. And the thing is, is that these are the growers that the big houses are buying their grapes from, right? So the big houses, some of them have a state fruit, but the majority of them are buying them from these growers, mm. you know, and they're producing these big labels that are getting hundreds of dollars for a bottle. And these growers have decided, well, what the heck, man? <laughs> so if you can, if you walk into a wine store and you see that it's a grower champagne, it very often is the same exact grapes that are being made into the hundred dollar bottles of champagne. But it's it's you know the low man on the totem pole. It's the people that are in the vineyard doing the hard work. Right, it's you know you can't you can't make a great wine from crappy grapes, right? So these are the people who are making sure that the grapes are stellar, and now they're making their own wines. And I mean, like you can get Deb for like under twenty bucks, something, right? Like twenty-five to thirty dollars. Okay, right. So twenty-five bucks gets you an incredible right. champagne, you know. Wow. And it's it's kind of like the little known secret: go with the grower. <laughs> We need yeah, to share this good. information, Lori. I, I hope you can share some of this because this is great I, stuff. I don't know how they are in the liquor stores, 
I mean, I think you have to really know what's in, you know, the liquor store, store. Or know the label. Um, I belong to a champagne wine club where I get grower champagne. So, which some of it, it's phenomenal. I highly recommend it. Yeah, but you can go mm-hmm. into even even some of those bigger box wine stores like Total Wine and those guys. If you go in, um, they often have labeled grower champagne. You know, mm-hmm. um, you know if you go into the because it's legit champagne. It's from the Champagne region, so it's titled champagne, but they're calling it grower because it doesn't have the chateau attached to it. So. Yeah, that's really cool. I had not heard of that either, so I'll have to see what I can find for that too. Yeah, Maybe it is for the holidays or during the holidays on Grower Champagne. Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah, my list. <laughs> right, right. Uh, Michael, what's going on? You're you're quiet tonight. Come on, talk to me. More more of your wine for Thanksgiving. Well. <clears throat> This is the first time I've been out of bed in three days, to be honest with you. Oh, I've been no. sick with the dog. Oh. oh. Yeah, I had to. So that's that's why I'm more quiet. It's just, uh, yeah, I'm not arguing about, uh, I'm not going to be talking about uh, 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 rosés or anything like that tonight. <laughs> So for those of the, for those of you who do not know, our last uh, wine writers wrap up was about future wine trends. And although I thought the biggest the biggest uh, battle would be about robots in the wine world, Michael became very fixated on rosé. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So, so yay or nay on the rosé? Nay. Nay. Oh, okay. Yeah. I so, won't pick so, a fight with Mike, but okay. So I ended up actually publishing. I'm gonna thank Lori for the for the platform because I ended up publishing that story and literally got over 200 comments on all the various blogs and um, websites and everything else, and got more people talking about. About 70% actually agreed with me that it was, this is just a passing fancy, um, and 30% thought I basically didn't. Un, I had probably uh, had some kind of uh, uh, problem with my palate, not understanding rosé. So there was this, but it was interesting conversations, and most of them were fairly civil. A couple of people got a little uncivil, but that's okay. But it was a very good exchange amongst a lot of hundreds of people, and it was uh, quite an interesting conversation and dynamic. Uh, and probably one of the more, I'd say, controversial writings that I've done and put it out there. But I did try to tell people it was a little bit tongue in cheek, and so I think people took it in a good good light that way. But it did arouse. I mean, those are the over a hundred comments, but there was uh, either thumbs down or thumbs up, hundreds and hundreds of com- uh, uh, wow. icons on it, so uh, emojis. So it's kind of interesting. Was, but anyway, Michael was so, very but, adamant. There will be no rosé on his Thanksgiving table. <laughs> there will not be. In fact, in the story, I said the only time if somebody gives me a rosé for some reason, it goes to some. I usually bring it out for some unsuspecting folks at Thanksgiving. That's kind of what I, that's what I do. Like, that's how I get rid of it, give it to somebody. Um, but, you know, the only thing, the only thing that we really do, I mean, it really is, um, you know, when they, you know, you have uh, all these appetizers and the potato chips and the uh, eggs and, you know, stuffed eggs and all the stuff, all that we just, Put out a bunch of what I call fairly inexpensive champ or chard, uh, chardonnay, and then when we sit down for dinner, we have a good chardonnay. Mm. So, and then and we have the we start out first initially, like I said, with the champagne, then we go to a very high end chardonnay, and then we just bring out a bunch of other chardonnays, and then a nice pinot, and and that's pretty much our uh, the Roussan, Roussan, Marsan, and that's kind of the the evening. That's, and, you know, there's all kinds of other things. There's, you know, the dressings and there's, we, we call it, uh, my grandmother used to make this thing called sweet potato poo, 
Now, sweet potato poo is not necessarily the kind of uh, thing you want to see on your typical uh, Thanksgiving table, but it is a, a sweet potato mush, I call it. I'm sure there's a better word for it, but uh, and topped with a marshmallow glaze. And then that is served and baked and then given out. And it, uh, the description, the name alone tells you what it looks like, but that's what that's what's served <laughs> on the plates. Right. So that that's going to lead me to my last comment about Thanksgiving is the desserts. So what is everybody's favorite dessert for Thanksgiving? What do what do people eat on Thanksgiving for their for their you know let's wrap up this meal? So. Michael, well, we already know pump that, that sweet potato poo. Uh, <laughs> but, well, um, I, I love pumpkin pie. Pumpkin pie is my favorite. And like I already said, I don't always go to a Thanksgiving dinner, but there have been years where I'm in the grocery store and I'm like, I'm just going to buy myself a, a pumpkin pie right now and I'm just going to eat pumpkin pie. So whether right. I get it on Thanksgiving or not, I will have it. So I find it whenever I can. And have you paired it with the wine? I don't think I ever have. I, has anybody else? Is there like an official pumpkin pie pairing? No. Have, it's got a lot of spice to it. So, you know, I mean, it, not to go back to it, but like I, I haven't done it, but Cab Franc pairs very well with pumpkin stuff, like mm -hmm. butternut squash, that whole fall thing Cabernet right. Franc pairs well with. But I'm wondering about Malbec with it. Deb, what do you think? Malbec to? I think it was Syrah. Well, oh. I, Syrah could be good. Syrah. I, 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 I've, I've actually had the, the, the remnants of a Malbec when we started the meal and did finish it off because I do like wine with my dessert for some reason. And I did two things. I did uh, a pumpkin pie because I love pumpkin pie for Thanksgiving. Um, my trick for pumpkin pie is that I add a shot of, of uh, dark aged rum to the mix in the pumpkin pie. So it brings out a little bit of spiciness in the, in the pie. And, and of course, I love apple, so I do apple pie too. And and yes, the Malbec and it does phenomenal with it. I mean, it goes great. How about yeah. a Mavedra? Yeah, well, I mean, the, the Mavedra for us went well when we had it with the pumpkin. So I mean, I would guess yeah. that with the pumpkin pie, it would it would work there too. I just I don't know. I'm so excited about the pie. I'm not thinking about anything else. So. <laughs> <laughs> involved at that point. <laughs> so we always, yeah, I always that's interesting, make an apple but... pie eat it because in my family everyone's chocolate driven. So oh. I, I, I'm very, I go apple picking and I make an apple pie. So I make an apple pie and then we always have something chocolate. Okay. And what do you like, do you, do you have wine with the apple pie? Yeah. Um, I think Riesling goes well with the apple pie. I agree. I would guess so. maybe a Chardonnay could too, because some Chardonnays have that apple note to it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That could work. Did you get a yeah. great sweetness in it a little bit? Yeah, and no note maybe. Well, they're they're on their own with you know whatever reds are left. <laughs> but yeah, uh, but, but yeah, somebody always brings like a chocolate something and yeah. Oh, I like the I like the chocolate. apple and the Riesling. I like the apple and the Riesling. Wow. All right. Well, I am now hungry again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I need to go make biscuits so I can think about Thanksgiving. Um, all right. So are we ready for the riddle? Yeah. Michael, you have your pen. Maria's got her brain. We're all ready. I went, I went Thanksgiving. So it's it's kind of a little different than um, than the other riddles. So the other riddles are more like thinking this is kind of like jokey riddle. I'll give that I'll give that a uh, hint. Okay, less thinking and more jokey riddle. And definitely think little kids, little kids, right? These are the jokes when you were a little kid. All right. Why didn't the turkey finish his dessert? <laughs> Maria, of course, gets it. <laughs> 
I told you, bet on her. I told you that's where the that's where the big money is, right there. He was quick. He was quick. <laughs> I guess so. We you we you said little, little kids. <laughs> I thought it was such a cute little joke riddle, whatever it was. Um, usually, Carlos, I will say it's a little bit more brain, brain teaser type thing. But I wanted it to be Thanksgiving. Okay. I'm going to use that one, okay, with the kids. So thank you, thank you, everybody, for joining the Wine Writers Wrap-Up. It was so much fun to talk to you about Thanksgiving and wine pairing suggestions. And I'm going to give you each, like, you know, that one little minute at the end to talk about yourselves. And if you have one Thanksgiving tip for somebody, wine, you know, or a favorite wine that you pair with Thanksgiving or, you know, a little wine tip that you want to give somebody, please share that with them. Okay. Michael, you're already big screen for me, so I'm going to go with you first. Okay. Uh, so there, just I, I want a quick follow up rather than my what I do. Um, we mentioned Tab Franc earlier uh, and various foods. Just so you know, for the Cab Franc this year, which is in April, uh, the celebration, we're doing a whole thing with uh, vegetarian uh, foods, both for appetizers one evening and then the next night uh, dinner, and it's an uh, a vegetarian meal with that's also for vegetarians as well as the carnivores in the audience. So uh, <laughs> uh, just wanted to pass that information on. Other than that, it's Cabernet. Uh, so I do uh, California wines and wineries. And Carlos, I do a lot of food and wine pairings also. And you'll look on that and you'll see a lot of different things there. And, and then that's enough. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Maria? Like I already mentioned earlier, I'm Wine and Cheese Friday. Um, my handle on most things is at Wine Cheese Fry. Um, my Thanksgiving tip, I would say, is try a more Vedra if you haven't. Because like I said, I, I've had it a couple times, and I know that when I was selling wine a million years ago that nobody had heard of it, nobody knew what it was. I would say still... It's not one of those common ones that people find or know about. So if, you, if you're looking to try something new, try that. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Carlos. Well, first I want to thank everybody here. And Lori, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. I hope we can do this again. Um, I did type in the chat my website. Um, if you guys want to try something a little bit alternative for Thanksgiving with the pork, I do have some traditional sides. But as far as wines are concerned, um, I guess I am a traditionalist. I would definitely go with lighter wines, both Pinots, Chardonnays. Um, I am anxious to try maybe some blends and definitely a Cabernet Franc in the future. But whatever you do, just do it with love. I like it. I like it. Do it with love. Deb? I'm Debbie Giaquindo. I can be found at HudsonValleyWineGoddess.com and HB Wine Goddess on Instagram and Twitter and Hudson Valley Wine Goddess on Facebook. And uh, my restaurant is Trio North Wildwood on all the social media channels. And the one thing for Thanksgiving is drink what you like. Enjoy it. I mean, as much as we're talking about what we like and what we do, do what you like. And it's mm -hmm. most important that you enjoy it. And experiment. And try different wines. See yep. Except for rosé. No, Come on now. <laughs> Michael, where, when's your birthday? I'm going to buy you a case of rosé. <laughs> uh, send it here. Send it to Miami. We'll drink it. I, I like Provence rosé. Other than that, I don't like all the American rosés. That's all. That's all. <laughs> we'll have to have a discussion about rosé on, on the off. Yes. On the, Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> uh, and again, I am Lori, your host. Thank you, everybody, for joining. And I agree, you know, you've got to drink what you like. And you know what? Thanksgiving is all about bringing people together and just being together with either your true family, your extended family, whatever makes you happy. And I, you know what? I'm thinking, like, as I'm talking about this, I'm thinking GSM's 
and petite verdot. Think about a petite verdot. Find a wine with some petite verdot in there to get some of that spice in there to pull in some of those, you know, the second half of Thanksgiving, you know, the the second half of the meal. Uh, so that's my tip. Let, let's let's look a little bit more into some wines with some petite verdot, Mauvedra. Uh, you know, there's GSM. There's so many wines out there. Uh, I love Grenache with, with, well, I love Grenache altogether, but Grenache with, with uh, Thanksgiving is another option. But I like what people are saying. Drink what you like, do what you love, and be with people that you care about. That's really what Thanksgiving is. So thank you, everybody, for joining. I actually saved one little slug left of my IPA. I don't know if people got more wine left, but as I say, plancha. And thank you for joining, and have a wonderful Thanksgiving, everybody. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers, everybody. Lancha. Thank you. Give me the ranch, ranch wine. This has been another episode of Exploring the Wine Glass. Thanks for listening. If you have suggestions on what topics you would like me to discuss, please reach out on social media. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook as Exploring the Wine Glass. I am also on LinkedIn as Lori Hoytbud. Of course, you can always email me at exploringthewineglass at gmail.com. If you enjoyed what you heard, please rate, review, and subscribe to help others find me more easily. And most importantly, tell your wine-loving friends, because if you like the podcast, they will too. Music is Wine by Kevens. Until next week, slancha. Irish coffee, banana, dark curry, sweet merlot, give me